subject only to this, that I should not advocate violence and I should be subject to civil consequences. Civil consequences of All anything right. I say. With that definition in mind, we will continue by introducing you to our guest panel tonight. First of all, Ian Mulgrew, Western Bureau Chief for the Globe and Mail. Kathleen Mahoney, a law professor at the University of Calgary and a freelance broadcaster. George Oak, Assistant Managing Editor of the Edmonton Journal. And now, before we continue tonight's crossfire, here's some of what you think. I don't think we should prosecute them for their beliefs, but I think we can prosecute them for what they do with their beliefs. However, I feel that cases in point, such as are going on in Ontario right now with this individual who is being tried and convicted for expressing his opinions, even though they might not be opinions that many of us believe in, um, is very dangerous. If you look at what the Charter says, even the Charter of Rights says that everything is subject to, uh, I forget the exact wording, but the uh, rules of a free and democratic society. And it's all subject to limits. There are limits on what people can do, and promoting hatred is probably beyond the limits, if that's what it is. I guess the question becomes who determines what criteria is to be set up and who is going to play God. Welcome back to Crossfire. Our first question from our panel tonight from George Oak from the Edmonton Journal. George? Mr. Christie, you're so committed to freedom of speech. You seem, though, to walk around with a writ in your back pocket, uh, stifling that freedom of speech in newspapers. You sued a number of, of newspapers uh, for a number of things. Why, if you're so committed to freedom of speech? As I said, subject to civil consequences, where there is a statement against a person that is false, I think that anyone has the right and should have the right to sue. I've successfully sued, for example, the Edmonton Sun for saying things that I know to be false that are damaging, and the courts uh, decided that. I paid the cost. The state didn't. I don't have the state come to my assistance. I take the matter to the courts. There's a great difference between that and the criminal process, where the power in the state to prosecute puts an individual at his own expense to great costs. How much money have you picked up in uh, successful uh, libel? Since. Nothing so far. They don't pay uh, very well, but they do give <laughs> you the opportunity to reply sometimes. Kathleen Mahoney. Yes, Mr. Christie. Uh, our code as lawyers, our professional code of conduct, states that lawyers should not express their personal opinions of or their belief in their client's cause. Now, this has been underlined by the Supreme Court of Canada, which has said that this is an inflexible rule in the practice of law. Now, during the Zundel trial, you made a number of comments. Uh, indicating your personal views. In fact, you've been quoted as saying that you have come to have yourself some grave doubts about the numbers of people who died during the Holocaust. Now, do you think that there should be one rule for all of the lawyers in Canada and another rule for Doug Christie? If you think you're going to be able to prosecute thought crimes and impose the rules of silence on lawyers because you don't like their opinions, I think your views are very dangerous. I'm, I'm talking to you about our code of professional conduct. You yes, say that and that's I'm wrong? well aware of the code of professional conduct. I wasn't asked to comment on Mr. Zundel's guilt or innocence. I was asked my personal opinion by a number of media people who, like other packs of piranhas, uh, attack anyone whose views differ from theirs. And I might say that I have a right, as anyone has, to express their views, I hope. Are you not subject, people. then, to our code of professional conduct? Is that it's what you're saying? It's got nothing to do with my professional actions when I give my personal opinion in response to a personal question. I That's hope. precisely what the code says that we shouldn't do when we're in oh, the process of litigating right? a case. Well, when we're in the process of litigating a case, I suggest that at times we're asked to comment on the validity of the law itself, and I have. And if I'm asked an opinion on a matter of history, uh, I can assure you I'll give a direct and honest answer. And anyone who tries to silence me better be ready to argue that case in court, too. Mr. Christie, I've <clears throat> I'm quite curious by your position that you stake out a very high road position that you stand for freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. You make nice speeches to one of your colleagues here about professional ethics. Especially when I'm just attacked. curious if this is what you believe is the issue in the Zundel trial, for instance, yes. why you didn't argue this in front of the court instead of bogging the trial down in a case of historical argument. First of all, I did argue that in front of the court, and secondly, I felt I had the right to obey my client's instructions to put forward what he believed to be the truth. And I think, frankly, that if anyone prohibits the right of a, an accused in a thought crime situation, 
to put forward his honest beliefs, then I think that it, really the trial becomes pointless. Well, excuse me, by using terms like thought crime, it seems to me you're prejudging the issue that the court was set up to establish. The court's there as a, as a fact-finding yeah, body, well, as I, I understand it. I have expressed my view that it isn't proper for such cases as that to be in court to decide historical issues before a court of law, in my opinion. So why was your client... the taxpayer's money and time. Well, why was your client, as the Crown Prosecutor pointed out in the case, there was an informal agreement beforehand not to get into histor a historical quagmire. That's utter nonsense. It's typical of the media to be misinformed. There was no. Are you agreement denying whatsoever. the statements that the Crown Attorney made? I have no idea what the, the Crown trial? Attorney said to you or anyone else, but I can assure you there was no agreement not to put forward my client's point of view. In fact, he did. Let me assure you, uh, Mr. Christie, that, mm. that I'm not a piranha and I'm not here to bite your leg. But well, let's, it, let's, it uh, happens from time Let's time. get some of your personal. Uh, viewpoints then, uh, considering the niche uh, you think in law you've, you've uh, come out with. Do you uh, believe in an international conspiracy of Zionists and bankers? I don't think it would be safe to express my opinions. I think that with the type of remark that was last made by the lady in the middle, uh, I wouldn't want to uh, get into that area. But I'll tell you one thing, the accused was acquitted of that charge, and so I suppose it is legal to answer that question. I don't think I will. You don't think you'll answer it? Why not? No. No, because I prefer the safety of my own opinions and keeping them to myself. But you're the, but you're the person who loves freedom of speech. Yes, and until such time as it becomes safe to express your opinions again, I think I'll keep mine to myself. Do you think we don't have freedom of speech in Canada? That's what I think, sir. Yes. Okay. Surely, Mr. Christie, we're giving you uh, something of an opportunity here to, to make your points clear on a, on a personal level as well as a professional one. Well, I'm glad to make my points clear on a personal level as well as a professional one. Do we understand you correctly in that you're advocating complete freedom of speech? Yes, such force, the, force people who, who may be injured by such unlimited freedom to then pay their own expenses in a court of law if they want redress. Well, first of all, sir, I have the recollection of the words of Thomas Jefferson in which he said that uh, error needs the support of government, truth stands on its own, and we should let our Constitution be a monument to the safety with which error of opinion can be tolerated when uh, truth is left free to combat it. And those who have contrary views are always free to express them in a free society. And if that, that is the case, why do they need laws to silence their opponents? Mr. Christie, I have uh, another question about your conduct as a professional person. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand that at the end of the Zundel trial, you refused to make submissions to the court uh, regarding Mr. Zundel's sentencing. And in fact, you refused even to attend, and the judge ordered you to do so. You are misinformed now, on two counts. Well, if you'll just let me finish my question. Uh, it was also reported in this exchange with the court that you implied some impropriety on the part of the judge. Now, do you think this kind of behavior is in the best interests of your client? You are misinformed on three counts now. First all right. of all, Go I did ahead. not refuse to make a submission. After eight weeks of trial, it was fairly clear to me, having had the accused testify and all his character of witnesses being called, that the opportunity f to form an opinion on what sentence would be appropriate was available. And I think, frankly, that your question presupposes two other errors uh, that I don't think I should comment on. Did you not uh, say to the judge that he'd already made up his mind to, as regards no, your client's character? No, I did not character? say that. Did you file libel actions against all of the newspapers that reported you saying things like that, sir? I couldn't, practically speaking, we have the means at my disposal to sue all those who uttered false statements about that trial. Why not? You're a lawyer, sir. I believe it costs about $25 to no, go down and No, it costs $50. Rid issue. And $50 that it would be a great deal of money to sue every media source that said incorrectly, for example, that Zunda was charged with hate, uh, promoting hatred, which was said so often, which was quite false. There's so many other things that were said that were false. I wonder why you, well, why you, why you in the media think that Zundel should be subject to one set of rules, but I'm sure you would not like to be prosecuted but you, yourself. But you're, you're doing the same thing. You, you come on here and imply that you're something of a martyr in this country that's not treating you fairly and you won't no, no, not say at all. what you think. I never said that at all. I said I'll be you, quiet until such time as it's but, safe But to you speak. want it both ways. You wrote the Edmonton Journal uh, on September 22nd, 1984, mm -hmm. publishing a letter where you were critical of the Canadian Bar Association for uh, wanting to take out willfully yes. in Section 281.2 of the Criminal Code. That's right. And uh, yet, uh, what about the, 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 the bar? Does it cri criticize you for some of the things you've done? I'm, I'm glad to hear any criticism from any member of the bar. I think it should be but there, right? When, when, when Kathleen uh, Mahoney was just asking you, you, you said no. You didn't want to take her questions or answer them. Well, uh, frankly, I couldn't remember the three And that was errors. criticism from one no. of your colleagues. Well, I accept criticism from anybody. 
but I can't remember three errors of fact at the same statement. And that's why I didn't remember the last two. But there were two others that I didn't address. Have you ever been threatened with disbarment by the CBA or brought up in a review no, committee? No, the CBA they doesn't disbar anybody so far. Have you been threatened with disbarment by no, any legal no, society? No, no, I, no, I haven't been. But I'm sure with the type of attitude that some people express that they'd like to see that happen to anyone who defends pre people's freedom of speech that they don't happen to like. I could ask you a more simple question, Mr. Christie. If you believe in complete freedom of speech... Subject to two limitations I mentioned. Um, civil consequences, I believe you and said. And advocating violence, which should and be illegal. And advocating violence. Is. Would you then be in favor of seeing Mr. Clifford Olson produce his memoirs, or perhaps a rapist producing his memoirs from jail? Certainly. You have no problems with None that? None at all. I'm sure that most people would find it quite revolting. And anyone who didn't could read it and could decide what they thought of it. And frankly, sir, I wouldn't want you to decide whether they could or not. I wasn't setting myself up as a censor, well, sir. I'm here asking you, you questions yes, about I your know, position as I'll a ask... spokesman for certain people in our society. Well, I'm a spokesman for Doug Christie, nobody else. Speaking my own opinions, I want that very clear. Don't suggest well, sir, that I'm a spokesman Well, sir, why did you use words else. like, we believe this in front of the court? You allied yourself with your, your client's I case. said we once, sir. And it was made to, very clear to me that I shouldn't use the word. And I never did, as far as I'm aware. After. after That's right, yes. So it was very clearly... Well, Mr. Christie, if you uh, will not tell us your personal views mm -hmm. on historical well, if you revisionism... Ask me a specific oh, let, question, let's get a question out here, please. Ask me a specific question. I was just going to ask you if you're still a Western separatist. Certainly. You still are. Yes. Very definitely. More so, if anything, after my experiences of the recent past. You because feel that the there was an Eastern bias? You held. I don't particularly like Toronto. Well, you want a specific question. I asked you then if you believed in a, a Zionist conspiracy. I think that when it comes to conspiracies, it's an arrangement or agreement between two or more persons to accomplish common purpose. I think that uh, one could view any organization as having such conspiracies. Do you view that one as a as A Zionist conspiracy? conspiracy? Yes. I think there are political interests in Zionism that exist throughout the world. Yes. What are, is the are you anti-Semitic? I don't know what is uh, anti-Semitic. Are you anti-Jewish, sir? No. Could you tell us what end this possible Zionist conspiracy may be aimed at? Well, you've used the word Zionist conspiracy. I'm sorry, I was just picking yes, up another Yes, you were picking question. it up like most media do, and not quoting me, but quoting another media source. But that's all right. The point being this, that there is a Zionist entity in the world called Israel, and there are those who support it, and there are those who don't. How does that come into play in Canadian politics, sir, and because how does it affect is a, uh, Because here? Israel is a, a matter which is of interest throughout the world. The Middle East is a very important area. There's a very great danger of war there. And if anyone criticizes Israel, it seems like they get in a great deal of trouble. And I find that rather surprising. Come now, Mr. Christie. There's lots of criticism of uh, Israeli policies in the Canadian press and in the United States press. We had uh, uh, the massacres. Uh, the yes, Sabra and Shatila. Yes, they were and mentioned. They were, they were critical of Israel. Yes, they were. So how can you say that or imply I, that? I said, uh, sir, simply that there are those who support Israel and there are those who don't. And those who support Israel work to that end. Mr. Christie, because of uh, your defense of uh, Ernst Zundel and uh, other items you've been involved with, you've taken on an unmistakable mantle of notoriety on a personal level. Is it a burden or a benefit? I consider it a duty to defend the principles that I believe in. And I don't consider that a burden. I consider it a privilege. I consider that every day that I'm able to do so, is subject to whatever anyone else might say, a day that I'm grateful to have lived. Indeed, I feel very grateful to, for the opportunities I've had. Why, why is it, though, sir, that other lawyers also defend such lofty principles without stirring up anywhere near the amount of controversy that you happen to? Tell me what other lawyers have defended cases such as the... Um, I've case. seen Clayton Ruby and people like that in Toronto involved with the Ross Dowson case, the case of the RCMP Dirty Tricks in Quebec, mm -hmm. the ca Operation Checkmate in Toronto found lawyers there yes. more than willing to go out and, and fight for poor people mm -hmm. and Well, and I'm sure that Mr. Zindel people. tried to find other lawyers. I'm aware that he did. And I really don't think so. Other lawyers I froze be... him out, sir? What? Other lawyers froze him out and wouldn't take the case? Is that what you're suggesting? You should ask him what happened. I said he approached other lawyers. That's all I said. I don't discuss other things. But your question was, why there's so much notoriety? I don't know. And frankly, sir, it doesn't seem to be my responsibility to decide what there is in the way of notoriety. Well, you seem to stir a lot of people up, from judges to other well, I think lawyers it's to I the think populace. it's time people got stirred up about freedom of speech, because I think that 
Section 177 and Section 281 are very dangerous to freedom of speech, especially when the media seems to take the view that everything that, that goes down in the prosecution of those cases and those situations is uh, fine. Could I ask you what you would replace them with, what statute? I've what? tried to explain more than once, mm -hmm. sir. I thought you might have understood that I don't think they should exist. I think the, the only limits upon freedom of speech should be it should be a criminal offense to advocate violence, and you should be subject to civil consequences for false statements. Civil consequences. How, how do you get civil consequences out of people without any money? And how do you stop those people from... Oh, do you from... really think that the Holocaust Remembrance Society had no money? Or that, uh, that there's a difficulty finding money to prosecute people whose opinions are unpopular? I find that hard to believe. No, I'm talking about getting money out of them and making them suffer for promulgating false information. Well, why should they suffer for promulgating false information when the truth is able to combat any lies with an opportunity to answer? Why do we have to have a society because in which you, you sir, want punishment for people's views? I think if people commit crimes and what they hurt crimes? people... You've presumed the existence of crimes Mr. Zundel has thoughts. been convicted of a crime, sir. Yes, and I have expressed my opinion on the validity and value of Section 177, and I think that it's a waste of public money and time. That section should be abolished. Further so do that, a lot of other editorial Further that, to that point, Mr. Christie, uh, I think the criminal code was... Uh, put into place to reflect public interest. And uh, I in gather that you're saying that... Uh, in 1889? That Let's finish the question, please. I, I gather that uh, you're saying that Section 177 does not serve the public interest and the public should not be interested in people who spread false news. And I gather that you're also the saying that the hate, the the hate literature provisions news. would fit your definition as offending freedom of speech. So therefore, I think you're saying that it's not in the public interest to prevent the spreading of hatred against a minority group. Is that your position? No, I think there are other remedies to the public interest besides prosecution. You don't have to prosecute people whose opinions you don't agree with. What then? You can ostracize them. You can criticize them. And frankly, if you want to legislate against them, I wonder why. Why do you have to do so? Why do Is you have to... Is it not something to do with protecting a minority group, which would otherwise oh, really? be... We need protection the consequences? that much? We need protection from other people's points of view that we should legislate against them? I find that ridiculous. You don't think there should be any protection for racial intolerance of one group to another short of physical violence? Certainly not. If you think you're going to be able to prevent people having bigoted opinions by uh, legislating against them, all you'll do is create greater hostility, greater resentment, and ultimately violence. I agree that you can't legislate attitudes in human beings. Nor morality. But, or morality, but you can't, uh, at, the, you can't at the, the same time. Where are all the great society has a dilemma days? about this. Uh, you don't want to see people called names because of their race, surely, do you? Frankly, if people are called names because of their race every day, whether we like it or not, and frankly, it won't solve the problem to legislate that into uh, a crime. In, so, fact, in fact, it will create greater bitterness. So you would say we should live with big bigotry and be... And, Look, uh, is there some great upsurge of bigotry? I have heard too many people uh, allege the existence of some great boogeyman. For example, the abolition of the tariff item on immorality and obscenity that just occurred in the Federal Court of Canada. I think that's great. I don't think there's going to be uh, the end of the world tomorrow because there's, a, there's, a, there's an open border on that subject from the United States For, now. Further to that point, Mr. Christie, mm -hmm. then uh, on your definition of what's harmful and what's not and what are the I limits of freedom of expression... Moment, just a moment. You give me so many presumptions in your question, I can't follow your question. All right, let me I'd make like it much more simple. What do you well, think about child simple. pornography? Does that fit your, your limitations? Frankly, if there's child pornography, people can take it or leave it. And I don't think you or anyone else should decide when, where, or how it will be taken yes. or left. And you don't think that the children who are exploited to produce to that, porn, and you obviously don't think that the children who are exploited to produce that need protection That in either. itself is a crime, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, with so children it is. But if so it's as long as they're able to take the photos and disseminate them, that's okay. No, I think you can track down the people who took the photos, and if they have abused children, then you can prosecute them, but I don't think that the photos themselves are a crime. If they you want to make to sell them the and make danger money of people like you deciding what other people will see is far greater than anything that would occur if they did so. Why is it that Douglas Christie is right out of line with nearly every other Western nation's political and judicial system? That's the most ridiculous statement I've ever heard These uttered by the media. These people, in your point of view, that you're defending in this country and your position on they freedom of speech... They wouldn't even be prosecuted speech. in the United States of America, and that's a fairly Excuse large democratic me, there, country. There are all sorts of prosecutions going on right now against revisionists in the U.S. by survivors of the Holocaust. Name one. Uh, Mr. M Mermelstein That's is a civil suing. proceeding. Do you realize that? That's correct. That? That's you know fine. the difference? Yes, I do, sir. It's a civil suit since over a contract. Since every nation in the West, from Germany to France Except to Switzerland and the United States, is wrestling with this and trying to stop it, 
Why is it that you are going against the grain and saying we shouldn't try and stop it, we should in fact let it proliferate? As is usually possible. the case, Mr. Mulgrew, you get a few inaccurate statements in your supposition, such Could as... Could you point the, them out? Yeah, one, Thank the United you. States is not prosecuting people for their thoughts, they're not prosecuting revisionists. That's a civil suit, and you, like others, are exaggerating that as if it was the law of the United States. It's one case, and it hasn't even gone to trial that yet. That's it's all far off the, the mark you get. preliminary cases, sir. What? But anyway, let's talk about the convictions in France, the convictions in Germany. Well, let's talk about those. I don't particularly want to live in a society where thought becomes a crime. And if you knew Dr. Robert Forzon, We're you wouldn't... About public let me nuisances. finish. You, do you permit me to finish? Yes. Well, then I don't think if you met Robert Forzon, you would think he should be prosecuted either. He's an honorable person, someone whose opinions you might even enjoy hearing. I might, but why does the community in which he lives find him offensive and prosecute him with I regularity. Don't, I don't make... Five times, isn't it? No, that's certainly quite incorrect. It's as usual. several times. No, I don't think it's several times. You should get your facts straight. I could discuss it, but it would take more than ten minutes. We don't have the time left. We have to finish up on that point. <coughs> Crossfire returns in a moment, but first, some more of what you think. I'm, a, I'm a, an articling student. On trial. I think a lot of it is uh, publicity for him, you know, as well and stuff. And as far as Zundel's concerned, of course, it's a great pity that he got that kind of publicity, and I think that the media has to take some of the brunt for that. And that's tonight's edition of Crossfire. Before we leave you, we would like to say thanks to our guest panel. First of all, to Ian Mulgrew, Western Bureau Chief for the Globe and Mail. Kathleen Mahoney, a law professor at the University of Calgary and a freelance broadcaster. George Oak, assistant managing editor of the Edmonton Journal. And thanks to Doug Christie, defense lawyer in the Ernst Zundel trial and freedom of speech advocate. I'm Terry Glakoff for Crossfire. Good night.